Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, we're going to learn how to crochet the rustic tweed button cowl. This is a beautiful cowl that has like a textured woven look thanks to some post stitches. And we're going to go through the entire tutorial together. And then I've added some buttons so that you can button the cowl up, all three buttons, and wear it like a traditional cowl. Or you can kind of bring it around the front and almost like fold it down like a shirt. Um, or you can kind of wear it asymmetrically and like let the front come down. If you hop on the Fiberflux blog, I have lots of photos showing all the different ways to style this cowl. So let's talk about the supplies and the sizing and everything like that. So the finished cowl measures about 10 and a half inches wide and about 30 inches long. However, you can uh, change it up a little bit if you like to make it longer, like an infinity scarf, you can just make it longer and um, you know make it into a scarf if you want to just kind of not do the buttons and just make it really really long like a scarf so I just wanted to show you some of the striping that I have here one more thing I wanted to point out about this cowl is that we're going to be using the spaces that are in between these post stitches we're not going to be creating buttonholes but we're going to use the spaces there to um, button it together so really it's fully adjustable because you can use any space in the entire cowl that you like so let's talk a little bit about the supplies next. So for this project, you're going to need a six millimeter J crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey hook, just as a side note. I know a lot of people ask about my hooks a lot. This is a really comfy hook too, by the way. And um, a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and a ruler or tape measure is super helpful to kind of get the length that you want. And then the yarn. Let's talk a little bit about the yarn that I have here. So this is a striped project so I use lots of different colors here now all of this yarn is called wool of the Andes tweed now this is an 80 percent uh, Peruvian Highland wool and a 20 percent Donegal tweed um, each one of these is 110 yards so I use two balls of the rabbit heather two balls of the thirst heather and one ball of the dill heather so these uh, makes for a really kind of like muted, pretty um, palette here, but really you can use any yarn you like in any colors really. You can even make it solid, but if you choose to do stripes like this, you can see because of these post stitches, um, the rows interact in such an interesting way. It almost looks like a running stitch in embroidery. Um, but again, feel free to use anything you like. If you need to substitute yarn, uh, look for something that's a four or a medium on the yarn weight scale on the back of your yarn label. And this particular yarn is worsted weight and recommends an I, J, or K hook. I'm going to be using the J hook on this, okay? And finally, you're going to need some buttons. I use three buttons. Like I mentioned before, if you're going to make this into a scarf, you don't need the buttons. But if you want to button it together like I did, you can also seam it if you prefer um, but I use three buttons and I use matching scraps of yarn to sew them on. I will say too, as a side note, um, you're not going to use all of this yarn up. You will have a little bit of leftovers. So this is also a wonderful project if you want to do some stash busting as well. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to kind of slide this out of the way and we can refer to it and just have it a little bit out of the way here. And I'm going to grab our first color. Now you can really do this in any sequence you like. Um, I did kind of some chunkier stripes of the rabbit heather and the thirst heather, and then it's a thinner stripe of the dill heather. That's why I only you only need one ball of the dill heather. But I did just a thin stripe of that, and um, it looked very pretty the way it, it came out, but you can kind of do your striping however you like. So I'm going to show you um, the first couple of rows, and we're also going to go over how to change colors as well, so you can do your stripes if you like. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. So what we're going to do is, let me just zoom in so you can see everything a little bit better here. We're going to put a slip knot on our hook. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your crochet hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. Next, what we're going to do is make our starting chain. So I wanted to say there is no particular stitch multiple for this project. However, um, 
you can just work it over any even number. So if you want to make this wider or narrower, just any even number for your starting chain will be just fine. But we're going to start with 40 chains, okay? So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. 29 and 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. So here is my starting chain. And I do get this question frequently is uh, about the starting chain being too tight. So if you're learning how to crochet, sometimes your tension can be really tight until you've uh, works enough stitches and your hands kind of will relax a little bit more but you can always go up a hook size so you can go up to the K for the the starting chain only and then go back to the J for the rest of the project and that will help get those those chains loose enough to work into if you don't have this problem just stick with the J hook so let's start with row one now so for row one, we're going to work a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So this loop here does not count. So go one, two, three, and four. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into that fourth chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Then what we're gonna do is just make a double crochet in every chain all the way across, okay? So once again, wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Okay, so I'm just gonna work my double crochets all the way across. Get a little bit of yarn if you need to. Just like that, all the way across, okay? I love working with tweed yarn especially in the cooler months because it just looks so cozy and you can get that really nice stitch definition but you're also going to get a little bit of an interest with the, the little speckles in the tweed as well so it's tweed yarns are just so fun to work with and they always look very elegant to me I really like those for a lot of different projects all right, so we're just working our double crochets all the way across. So I'm gonna continue doing this, and once we get towards the end of the row, let's rejoin, and I'm gonna show you how to move on to row two next. Okay, I'm just coming up to the end of row one. We're gonna add that very last double crochet in that last chain. Okay, so for row two, we're gonna start working on the woven look. So row one was just regular double crochets, but now we're going to start getting all that nice texture on our piece. Okay, so what you want to do is chain three. One, two, three, and turn your work. Next, we're going to work a front post double crochet into the first stitch. So before we do that, I just want to explain, if you're not familiar with post stitches, I'm going to tell you all about them. So we did this chain three, that's gonna count as one of our double crochets. See how it lines up with this first, these are called posts, these columns. Um, so we're gonna go hop over to this next one. Not this, this very first one here, but this next one, we're gonna work that first post stitch. So there are front post double crochets and back post double crochets. And I'm gonna just zoom in a tiny bit. We're gonna work a front post double crochet first, but we're gonna alternate between the two, okay? So to make a front post double crochet, it's pretty easy. It's just where you place your hook. So wrap the yarn around the hook. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up under that post with your hook. So go down in there, go underneath that post and back up. See how the post is on top of my hook like that? Then wrap yarn around hook and pull it through the way you came, just like that, okay? Then you'll have three loops on your hook, just like a regular double crochet. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Just like that, okay? Now you can see 
it, it just becomes one large column, just seamlessly, okay? So in the next stitch, we're going to work a back post double crochet. That's what's gonna give us this woven look, inter, inter um, changing those post stitches. So wrap the yarn around the hook, and then instead of going up under it, we're gonna co take our hook and go around the back, after you wrapped yarn around hook, come up above it, go over top of it, and back down. Now if we pull this apart, you can see how that, the hook goes in. Now wrap yarn around hook, and bring it back through the way you came. And again, you'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. So we've done the front post double crochet to give us that column, that rib look. And then we did a back post double crochet and that kind of goes behind it and it creates this little ridge here, okay? So for the rest of our row, we're going to alternate between front post, back post, front post, back post, all the way across. Okay, so we just did a back post, so let's do a front post. We're gonna go a little bit slow and then I'm gonna pick up speed as we go along, okay? Okay, so go wrap yarn around hook, go up under the post, yarn around hook, bring it back through, yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Okay, let's work a back post now. Yarn around hook, go behind it, go up over it, back down, wrap yarn around hook, bring it back the way you came. Okay, three loops are on the hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops, okay? I'm gonna pick up speed a little bit and we're gonna move across the row. All right, let's work a front post double crochet. and a back post double crochet. Now I would, whoops, I would recommend when you're starting out with these stitches, just go nice and slow. My yarn split a little bit. Go nice and slow, no need to speed until you master the stitches. I also have, um, as a side note, um, now we're gonna work a front post, a separate video a whole separate video for the back post double crochet and a whole separate video for the front post double crochet. So if you want to make a little swatch before you start, if you would feel more comfortable doing that, by all means, you know, do your practice swatch. But I will say this is nothing but post stitches, so you'll get lots of practice with this project. Okay, we're going to do a back post and then a front post. and then a back post, and then a front post, and so forth. Okay, so just keep working your back post, front post, back post, front post, all the way across. I'm gonna work across my row, and then once we get towards the end of the row, I'm gonna show you how to finish it off, okay? So we're already starting to get a lot of really pretty texture. Okay, so I worked all the way across, I'm just in the home stretch here, so I just worked a back post double crochet. I'm gonna go ahead and work a front post double crochet. Just like that. And then to finish off the row, we're just gonna work a double crochet. See, this is our turning chain. We're gonna work a double crochet right into the turning chain, okay? So for the rest of your project, what we're gonna do is repeat row two over and over and over again to get this woven look. So I'm gonna go uh, and just get the next row started for you so you can see how we transition. And then what we'll do is switch colors uh, and I'll show you how to do that part as well, okay? So what you're gonna do, um, just to repeat row two, is chain two, or chain three rather, excuse me, one, two, and three, chain three. And then what you're gonna do is the same thing. So for row two, we worked a front post double crochet in that first stitch. Now remember this chain three here, that counted as the first double crochet of the row because we're not gonna work into that first post that we see, we're gonna hop over to that next one, okay? So work a front post double crochet. Okay, so wherever you see a front post double crochet, you'll work a back post double crochet and vice versa, and that's what gives you that woven look. Now for some chance when you made your starting chain if you happen to do an odd number um, you might have to start off with the back post double crochet instead of the front post double crochet but just know if you see the front post 
work a back post into it and just do the opposite of what you see. Now remember, the front post looks like a column and the back post looks like a ridge, okay? So let me just get you going across this row. So we have, see this is the back post with the ridge, so we would work a front post into that one. And then we come to our front post from the previous row, so we will work a back post into that one. And that creates that really great woven look that we're after. Okay, okay so to finish your cow, what you're going to do is just repeat row two over and over and over again until you get the length that you want. Now mine was about 30 inches long, but before we depart, let me just show you when you're ready to switch colors how to do that, okay? Um, what you're going to do is just cut the yarn. Now there's lots of ways to join yarn. If you have a preferred method that you like to do, definitely feel free to do that. Um, but what you're going to do is wrap the, cut the yarn, wrap the yarn around the hook and just pull it all the way through. And then grab your next color. I'm just going to grab this pretty taupe color. And then you're going to reinsert it back into that stitch that you were in before and bring it through and then just tie it right on. And then later on you can uh, weave these ends in as well. So just let's grab those ends and just pull them out of the way. Now, reinsert your hook back into that last stitch that you tied the yarn into, bring up a loop, and then you can just continue with row two. So chain three, one, two, three, and turn, and then you're just gonna continue um, working the way you've been working right, by repeating row two. So you're gonna work a front post double crochet. Remember how to start the row? Because it's a back post that we're working into. And then see we have our front post here, so we're gonna work a back post double crochet. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna get this nice woven look with all these fun stripes. So you can see how it's already interacting. Lots of fun. I really love this stitch, it's so pretty. Okay, and you're essentially just doing double crochets. It's really just where you place the hook that makes the difference when you're inserting your hook into that area in the first part of the stitch when you work it, okay? So now that we've changed colors, you can pretty much go through and finish up your cowl just like that, okay? So you're just going to be repeating that over and over again and see you can already see all that pretty texture. The last thing you'll want to do, now we can pretend we're finished and we're going to fasten off, okay, is to weave in your ends. So once you've worked row two over and over and over, you've added all of your pretty color changes, you can thread your tapestry needle. Now mine might be a little bit big for this yarn, but that's okay. And then you're just going to go, now this is completely reversible as you can see. So you can go in any side, just make sure to kind of go in the middle of those stitches. So you're going to go in one direction, just like that, and then you're going to pull it through, and then you're going to come back in the other direction, and then just give it a little tug and snip with your scissors, and then your ends will be woven in, just like that. Okay, so the very last thing you'll want to do is sew your buttons on. Now, I just spaced all of mine evenly apart, and we'll sew this last one on together. So just cut a little piece of yarn, and you'll want to make sure and take your needle and just do a test pass through it, okay, just to make sure the needle will fit through when you sew it. Then you can just thread your needle, and then wherever you'd like to place it, I just did mine spaced apart. I just eyeballed it. If you want to measure for an exact spacing, feel free to do that. But just come up through the bottom and don't pull it all the way through yet. Go back down. You can do this a couple of times and I like to do an X. Sometimes people like to sew their buttons when they have four holes like this with two parallel lines, but I like to do a little X. It's totally up to you. And then just do that a few times then what you can do is flip your piece over and take your two ends and go ahead and just tie a nice strong knot. I like to do a couple of knots with buttons just because it's something that's going to get worn and used. So you want to make sure your buttons, um, I'm going to switch to a larger tapestry needle now just because it has a little bit larger of an eye. 
but you want to sew this on nice and securely because it's going to get used and moved around a lot. So when you're sewing your tails, or weaving them in rather, keep this, the colors in the same areas. So you want to keep this tan in this tan section, okay? We're just going to weave that second tail in, and if you like, what I usually do is come back in the other direction like this with my needle. And then I'll just keep it from popping out, okay? And that's it. So our cowl is finished. So that is how you crochet the rustic tweed button cowl. And it looks super pretty. And I can't wait to see what all of yours look like too. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again. Thank you.